Hello, Michael Monatskine here, creator of the Ultimate Conventional Financing Real Estate Investment Calculator, as well as many other tools to help you on your investing journey on your path towards financial independence. If you ever want to um, see what other tools I have to offer, just please take a look. Um, there's a bunch of links here. We have where you can grab more of my other tools, including free calculators. There's more ultimate, especially creative finance focused calculators, some personal finance and financial independence tools as well. If you ever want to stay connected, Instagram is definitely the best way. Um, just DM me and I'm happy to help you. And definitely check out the my link tree to just see other ways to connect, whether you're looking for the links to the calculators, you want to join my school community, um, where we talk about underwriting and being an intentional investor to help you achieve financial independence through real estate and personal finance. Um, if you want to partner up on any deals or lend any investments. So there's a lot of opportunities here to connect. And then my YouTube as well, if you want to, um, I do some trainings focused on real estate investing, how to underwrite deals, a variety of other topics. If you ever have any suggestions or ideas, just let me know um, and just stay connected. So let's get into it. If you have purchased the conventional financing ultimate real estate investment calculator, you're going to get a link to something that looks just like this. You're going to want to bookmark and save this link because you're going to use this anytime you want a new copy of the calculator. All you're going to do is click make a copy. Once you've made the copy of the calculator, there's going to be two things you want to do every time. You're going to want to move it into the right folder. So for me, it's in my practice underwriting folder. I'm going to move it into there. And then you want to change the name typically to the property that you're working with. So the address or something like that. For me, this is going to be a San Antonio demo. There you go. So now you're ready to go. Let's quickly run through what are the different components of the calculator. So this property is a property in San Antonio that's listed on the market through a real estate agent. It's just listed on the MLS. We're going to take out a new loan, an investment loan to purchase this property or see if it's a good investment in the first place. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by filling out the property information here. You're going to put whatever entry costs you can, which include any down payment. This will carry over from this section will carry over into here. Any agent commissions you're responsible for, closing costs, any rehab or renovation costs, you need to make the property, uh, get it rent ready. Any admin costs, for example, for me, I, I set aside $1,000 for setting up an LLC for the new property and an inspection. Um, if this deal was brought to me by a wholesaler or someone else I need to pay, there's an assignment fee section here. Since this one was on market, we'll just put it at zero. And then carrying costs or any reserves that you want to um, have accounted for, saved up. And because this is a brand new loan, you're just going to select the loan type, whether it's, you know, if you're using an owner-occupied loan like VA, FHA, or your conventional could be an owner-occupied conventional loan or an investment loan, maybe a debt service coverage ratio loan, um, depending on, you know, what, what route you go. You have your purchase price in down payment, and then your loan amount will just be the difference between the two. Your purchase price minus your down payment will be the remainder is your loan amount and the terms of your loan, the interest rate. Um, is it amortized over 30 years? And then what the monthly payment looks like and when your first payment date is. You got your rental income, as I mentioned here, for up to four units, and then your expenses, as well as your reserves and property management. And then it's the analysis section. So here's the immediate analysis as a long-term rental for the first year, both with reserves accounted for, as well as reserves not accounted for. Um, underwriting your deal over the long term over snapshots at one, five, 10, and 20 years um, at market rent. So we'll get into that when we start going through it. If you decide to use an additional rental strategy, maybe you don't want to rent it out as a long term rental, but it's a big enough house for a rent by the room, you can try that route. If it's a short term rental or a mid term rental, you can underwrite it um, with that perspective as well. And then once you plug in all of your deal terms, this section will basically help you determine okay, if you reduced your purchase price, and which also would reduce your down payment if you're paying a 20% of the purchase price, at what point would that deal make sense from a cash flow and cash on cash return perspective? Or if for somehow you were able to reduce the interest rate on the loan, maybe you pay some extra points, it's going to cost you money, um, you're, but you're going to be able to reduce your interest rate. At what point does that make sense to do so? So let's actually go through this specific San Antonio deal. So let's fill it out the way I normally would. So San Antonio... Texas. I'd put the address there and even link to Zillow, but it's a three bed, two bath, 1750 square feet. 
The rental income on this property is $2,800 a month. And I think with a few minor uh, improvements, we can get it to around $3,000 a month is what we saw for the property. It's just a single unit, single family home. Let's go into the loan and then we'll get into the entry costs after. So the loan itself, the purchase price for this property is $350,000. Oops, forgot a zero. That would definitely make it a great deal. And you're going to put 20% down because you're using a, in an, a non-owner occupied conventional loan. And you're, needing, you're going to need 20% down for that is what your lender stated. So that's $70,000 down payment. So the remainder, $280,000 is your loan. And you got a quote for 7.5% interest rate. And it's a 30-year term. So if you made your payments each month, it would take you 30 years to pay off the full loan. And your monthly payment on that loan, your principal and interest is $1,957.80 a month. And your first payment for that loan would be 4-1-2024. Okay. So your expenses, you have your loan payment, right? So typically when you're making a mortgage payment, you're paying your P-I-T-I. You're paying principal interest, that's your loan right here, and your taxes and insurance. So you need to know what those amounts are because although the loan, the principal and interest stays fixed over the lifetime of your loan, taxes and insurance can and do change, especially in a state like Texas. So um, your tax on this property are 7,600 a month. I'll show you how we calculated that. And then the insurance or how we estimated that, I guess is better, is approximately $100 a month or 1,200. Because this is a single family home, you have no other expenses that you're covering. Your tenants cover everything. And then you, you're gonna you're out of state, so you're gonna pay 10% to a property manager. You could try to self-manage and you're gonna set aside 8% of your rental income for reserves and 10% of your rental income for, or 8% of your rental income for vacancy, which translates to one month a year of vacancy. And then 10% um, of your income for maintenance and capital expenditures where maintenance are your quick repairs. You need to send a plumber out to clean out a sink or something and, or maybe repair an appliance. Um, whereas your capital expenditures are the reserves you're setting aside for big, big ticket items. Like you're going to have your, the roof you're going to have to replace sometime in the future. You're going to have to replace appliances, flooring, things like that. And then what we're going to do here is I'll show you how we're able to estimate the property taxes real quickly. Um, let's say the current value of the property. Well, actually I already did it here. The tax assessed value was $277,717. That's what the property was last assessed by the uh, by the county, and that's that's how much they said the property was worth. The taxes on that amount was six thousand and thirty eight dollars, and that just is visible on Zillow, where you can look at the county records to see that amount. That translates to you just take that tax amount divided by the property value to a two point one seven four percent millage rate, which means you will pay that times the new purchase price is what your taxes will be. So if your new purchase price is 350,000 times that amount, that means you're gonna pay $7,610 because now your property, you're paying the tax on a higher value. It's typically the sale price is close to what the um, property taxes are assessed at the next time. When the property sold is typically assessed at the um, most recent purchase price. This is a rough way to estimate your property taxes. However, one thing to consider is every single market, every state, city, county, like even like street by street in some areas, well, like not street by street, but like uh, area by area within the same uh, city can be, can have different taxes. So you need to make sure you look through the, um, your county site to verify what the taxes are. So let's see, in this instance, this place rents for $2,800. And this is, these are the terms that you got for, for the lender. Let's see what the entry costs are. So you're paying your 2.5%. You're paying 50% of the agent commission, which is, let's say in this instance, 5%. You're paying 50%. The seller's paying 50%. So you're paying your 2.5%. In this instance, it is split. You and the seller are splitting the closing costs. So it's around 1% for you. This property is turnkey, ready to go. We're going to set aside $1,000 just for some quick cleaning and that's it, some minor touch up to get it rent ready. 
There's no assignment fee. This is not a prop. This is not a deal brought to you by a wholesaler or someone else you have to pay. You're already paying an agent um, for that. And you're setting aside a couple months of reserves here. So in this instance, your cash flow is massively negative. Your cash flow is negative $675. Although your income, your 2800 is greater than your monthly expenses. Your in this instance, your monthly expenses are your loan payments, your taxes, and your insurance, because you're not covering any utilities, the property management, because you're not the one who's going to self-manage it, that property management cost needs to be accounted for, that already gets you negative. And then when you start setting aside your reserves, that definitely gets you negative. So you can see your cash flow monthly is negative 675 a month. And that means your cash on cash return or your annual profit divided by your entry cost is going to be negative too. If you're not making any profit, it doesn't matter how much you put into the deal it's going to be negative. And the more you put in, the worse it is. Um, and then your cash flow without reserves. So let's say you didn't set aside any reserves for vacancy or maintenance and capex. You're still negative $171 a month. I don't like to see that. I like to see my cash flow closer to $100 a month minimum with reserves, 10% cash on cash return with reserves. Without reserves, I like to see is closer to a couple hundred dollars a month, maybe several hundred dollars a month, 500 plus. And my cash and cash without reserves, closer to 20-ish percent. Because I know I will end up being somewhere between that 10% and 20%. And those are the returns that I like. Let's see if this deal makes sense, if there's any way we can renegotiate it. The problem with buying properties conventionally or just through a lender is they kind of have uh, fixed requirements. They're gonna need you to put this much down they're going to, like, it depends on the loan product you're using, but typically for an investment loan, you're going to put 20, 25, 30% down. Sure, you can put a higher down payment down, which means your loan is less and your monthly payment is less, increasing your cash flow. But the more you put down, the lower your cash on cash return. Let's see. I mean, if you decided to put 30% down, let's see what that would do. You'd, you'd now put 105% down instead of 70. You would reduce your monthly payment by around 200 and you'd get closer to being cash flow positive, at least you're cash flow positive without reserves, but it's not, it's not, it's definitely not worth that exchange. So that's that would be a terrible way to try to do this. The only other real thing you can do is negotiate the purchase price. So if you lower the purchase price, you lower your down payment if it's 20% of your that purchase price, and your loan amount is less, so then your monthly payments are less. Or you can try to reduce your interest rate, but usually you have to pay points to do that, or find a lender who maybe is a little bit cheaper. Let's say you found someone at 7%. You go from 1957 a month to 1862. So you do save close to $100 a month. That gets you closer. Let's say you're able to get down to 5.75%. You can analyze, does this make sense for you to try to pay extra money up front in your closing costs to reduce your interest rate? So in this instance, let's say you get down to 5.75%, but you had to pay an extra, let's say, plus $5,000 in closing costs. You're able to increase your cash flow. It's still negative, right? But you're able to get it from like minus 650 to minus 351 or a positive 153 a month for um, without reserves, but it's still negative And it probably is even worse because now you have a, even though you have less negative cash flow, you still have, you have more entry costs now. So let's erase all this and let's see kind of what the calculator can also help you do. It can basically show you if you reduce the purchase price two and a half percent, five percent, ten percent, twenty percent, forty percent, at what point does the deal start making some sense? You only become positive cash flow on this deal if you reduce the purchase price by forty percent. So they want three hundred fifty thousand. You're going to offer 210. Obviously, they're not going to accept that. It's too, you know, that's that's not going to work. And that goes to show not every property that's for sale, the majority of properties that are for sale are not great investment properties. One of the other things you can do is see if it makes more sense, maybe as a short term rental or mid term rental. That's up to you to determine how much income you're going to get, how much it's going to cost you to set up your property, to set up the furnishings and all that. And then um, what additional utilities you have to cover. Remember, as a long term rental on a single family home, you tend to not have to cover the utilities and all that, where if you're renting it out as a short-term, mid-term rental, you might have to, plus internet and things like that. So it might just get more and more and more expensive. 
So in this one, really, there is no great way to make this a deal. I mean, you could see what rental income would make this make sense. I mean, it'd probably be closer to like, well, we see it's like, uh, it was 2,800. It'd probably be closer to like 3,800. Whoops, 3,800. So we can try to just estimate at what rental income would this be a good deal just for the sake of it. But this, there, there's no real way to make this one make sense. This was a creative transaction. You might have been able to um, negotiate some of these terms with the seller, but you can't really do that with a bank. They need a fixed down payment. It's typically going to be 20 to 30 percent, and they're going to tell you what the interest rate is. You can pay extra closing costs or buy or pay down, pay some points to buy down the interest rate, but um, it, it really doesn't make sense. Now that we've been able to significantly fake increase the income, you can see okay, this deal makes a lot of sense from a cash flow perspective, you know, you're already at 30 or really starting out almost right away at 5% reduction, but from a cash on cash return, the deal really isn't there because you're still putting a significant amount of money down. So even if you're making 50, hundred bucks, doesn't really do you a lot of good because you're putting a hundred thousand dollars to get there. Um, that's where it's really nice to be able to structure deals creatively because you can be, you have more flexibility in your down payment, especially and the monthly payments that you're making, especially the interest rate, especially in high interest rate markets like right now. But let's say this is a deal you want to move forward with just for the sake of it. And let's say you decided to use other people's money or a partner to help bring you the funds. Maybe you find the deal, you're going to manage it, but you have a private money partner who's going to bring you the funds and they get ownership on the property just as you do. And they get cash flow. In this instance, you're going to give them 32% ownership and then they get 70% of the cash flow so they can get paid back sooner. This breaks down the snapshot at one, five, 10, and 20 year increments, what the returns would look like for you and for your partner. Because your positive cash flow and you are not bringing any money into the deal, you would get infinite returns. But for them, they'd get really low returns. So let's say you want to give them 90% of the cash flow. Maybe you give them more ownership. You can play around with it to see what do, what did the deal what does the deal look like for them? Because there's very little cash flow in the beginning. Even if you give them 100%, it's not going to make a difference. They're going to get very low cash on cash return, but maybe the ownership benefits is worth it for them because they would get a return on investment 12.32%. Once you account for the cash flow plus um, the debt pay down, right? Your tenants are paying down your debt for you appreciation of property continues to increase in value. And then the tax benefits that come with paying down interest and depreciation, those have tax benefits in this instance at 28% tax bracket, around $4,000 of benefits as well. You can see what it would look like for them as a long-term hold. So let's say you decide you don't want to give up any equity or ownership you know, of the property to someone else. You can see, will this deal work with a private money lender, someone who's given you the money to cover the entry costs, you're going to pay them interest over a fixed time period. And then after that fixed time period, you're going to pay them back their the principal or their loan, the original loan amount. Um, this instance, because the property barely even cash flows, paying uh, a private money lender 10% on $92,000 is really just going to destroy this deal for you. So even if you're putting no money down, you're paying your lender $724 a month, or you're, you're paying your lender $769 a month meaning your cash flow is negative 724 a month. Disastrous, right? You're losing almost set, you know, over $700 a month with that prime money loan lender payment. And this is at the ridiculously increased rent amount, 3,800, which is not realistic. You'd also have to pay them back that $92,000 at some point. So this barely makes sense as a prime, with a private money partner who just owns a property with you. Definitely doesn't make sense to the private money lender. You do get to see what the deal looks like over a long-term period. Um, right, your benefits tend to get better on real estate investments over time because your loan payment is the same, your principal and interest, and then typically your rents and things like that go up, but also so do your expenses. So you can see what that looks like over the 30 over a 30 year time horizon. You have the snapshots on the other ones that we looked at, but you can see what that looks like over a 30 year time horizon year after year. You can also get a breakdown of the loan amortization. So what what is what does your loan look like over the next 30 years with each payment? So assuming it's a brand new loan that starts up at the start of next month, you will get to see what, how much is the loan balance going down over time for your principal and interest payments that you're paying each month, which is a fixed amount, because this is amortized over 30 years, 
initially the majority of her payments are going to go, the majority of this 957 is going to go towards interest and the, a small portion is going to go towards the principal, reducing the actual loan amount. Um, you can see on the chart when we get that break even point, and it shows here, you write around 2045. So April 2045 is right when you start making equivalent payments towards your principal and interest. Typically, the, the higher the interest, the further out this, this crossover is. And then you can also see over time how much of, the, of it have you paid down, right? The more loan you pay down, the more equity you're gaining. And you can S, and you can see like, okay, well, maybe at the end of each year, you put $5,000 in extra payments. You decide I'm going to pay an extra $5,000 at the end of each year. You can see what the impact of that, right? Your extra principal payments. You can see the impact on what that does for your loan. If you just do that for the first two years, you're saving yourself $64,000 of interest, which is reducing your loan by 38 months, which is incredible. So the more you pay over that, that what you need to and paying down your principal early, the more benefits it provides you um, over time. And the more you're reducing your interest and the sooner you're paying off your loan and the more equity you're gaining in that instance as well. And you can see, actually you'll see here, it makes, so this is, let's say 5,000 trans at the end of the year is 36,000 in savings. Well, if you do that same, but you do it sooner, you'll see why the sooner you make extra payments, the more the returns may not be substantially so with those, but you can see it's already $2,000 more in savings, just making those payments sooner. So that's one thing that you can do, especially with high interest rate loans to make them make, um, to get more benefits from it, from that pay down. So that's the end of how to utilize the ultimate conventional financing real estate investment calculator. If you ever want to get connected, remember you can reach out to me on any of these links. You can uh, grab more copies of the calculator if you want to purchase another one or if you want to grab any of the free copies. The best way to stay connected is on Instagram and YouTube. So thank you. Best of luck in your investing journey. And I hope you achieve financial independence.